You know, one of the things I talk to uh, kids, parents, other teachers about is um, the brain seeks really three things. It seeks ritual, it seeks challenge, and it seeks novelty, right? The ritual is your syllabus. The challenge is what you want to get the level of those kids to, the appropriate level of challenge. Demos are a way to hook students into your storyline. As you hear throughout the conference this week, you hear a lot about the NGSS standards, the science and engineering practices, the cross-cutting concepts, but you got to hook them, right? We can't get rid of demonstrations, right? And maybe have kids do demonstrations for kids. Show them. Let them do them for the kids. They love to get involved with that. It's learning by doing, right? Learning by doing is a big theme you'll hear too. So again, the three things, ritual, challenge and novelty for kids, and demos are a way to, ha- I always say a teenager's brain, and I teach high school, a teenager's brain is a terrible thing not to mess with, okay? Uh, up next on the stage uh, from Lane Tech High School is Mr. Kevin Kopak. Thank you. Okay, Um, good morning everyone. So my name's Kevin, and I'm gonna show you a couple of the demonstrations that I actually use in my classroom. So first, um, we're gonna look at using dry ice. And it's actually interesting, because all my students always ask me, why is it called dry ice? So it's something to investigate with them. The first thing I have is uh, some soapy solution here that I'm just agitating to get some bubbles. Then I have this Erlenmeyer flask with a couple pieces of dry ice. I'm gonna cap it here with this PVC piping. And then I'm going to dunk the actual tip of this in the soapy solution And once enough gas gets collected, you'll actually see it start to form a bubble at the end, as you see here. And the kids go bonkers when they see this. And once enough comes, it should fall off the tip. Come on, baby. Uh Uh-oh. Let's see. While that one is going, we could also use the kettle. And I know we have some of our friends here from the UK across the pond, and I've been talking to a few of them, and they were saying, well, you know what? I can't get a good cup of tea. And this is for you guys. So it's the same concept, and you can see that once it breaks, and the kids come, and they touch it, and evaporate. So this is... um, We call this leaky faucet, or in Chicago, when you're walking around today after the conference, you could see um, the signs that say, watch out for falling ice. So um, that's kind of important. Um, The next demonstration that I do, um, this is actually a really great one. I just used it in my classroom this week. And the concept is either acid-based chemistry or limiting reactants. And in this graduate cylinder, I have a stir bar that's spinning, and I have phenolphthalein and hydrochloric acid in here. And as I add base, which is sodium hydroxide, you should should see, I hope, this pink vortex. Do you guys see it? All right, this is pretty cool. Then once they stop adding, what happens? It disappears, which in Chicago, um, if I do this a little bit earlier on in the winter, we call this the polar vortex, and we're really happy when that disappears, right? But if I keep on adding, 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 and then if that doesn't work, we could just add more and see what happens. And then we have our pink, because there's too much base. And then we could overload it with acid. And then it should become clear again. 
All right. Thank you.